Hey gang, Joel Palmer here at Vintage Fitness. Want to talk today a little bit about plantar fasciitis. Okay, so a lot of people get this problem. Uh, classically, it's a pain at the bottom of the foot. Uh, I find in most cases the pain tends to be sort of around the heel, although oftentimes it can be also across the sort of the ball of the foot. Some people just get some real general pain along the fascia in the mid portion. The fascia basically runs from the balls of the foot down along the course of the foot and attaches into the heel. It, a fascia is basically a big tendon, a big tendon, and it covers the whole bottom of the foot in this particular case. Most people, as I say, tend to get the pain at the heel. That's the most common. Uh, a hallmark sign of the plantar fascia is oftentimes pain worse after rest. So a lot of times, first thing in the morning, that first moment that your foot hits the floor when you get out of bed, you just get this searing, stabbing pain in your heel or ball of your foot. Um, oftentimes after you've been sitting for a while, let's say you're in your Barco lounger watching the NFL playoffs, you go to get up to go to the fridge to get your next snack, and the minute your foot hits that floor, bang, you feel it. Part of the problem is, is that when you're at rest, all that inflammatory fluid just pools into the fascia. Um, the fascia will shorten, the, the inflammation pools in there, and then when you stand on it, the fascia has to stretch, that stuff has to kind of move and migrate out of your way, and it's that moment that your foot hits the floor that you really feel a lot of pain. So, if you're getting any of that kind of stuff, plantar fasciitis, this is a simple home therapy you can start doing. Uh, I'm gonna preface it, uh, like a lot of the rehab videos, um, if you've had it for a while, and keep in mind it's also sort of a tenderness kind of a thing, it can take a long time. It's not something that's gonna go away in a couple of days, a week or two. You're probably gonna have to rehab this thing for several months. It's not uncommon for people to have to work on this three to six months easy. But if you wanna look for some things you can do that are non-invasive, relatively simple to do at home. This is the video for you and this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna basically do four things. We're gonna stretch it, we're gonna strengthen it, we're gonna smash it, we're gonna ice it. So I'm gonna show you how to do all that right off the bat. Um, the first thing is the, uh, is the uh, stretch and the way I like to do it. Now, classically what people will do, I'll roll my pant leg so you can see, Classically, what people do is they do that traditional, you know, calf stretch where they put the ball of their foot on something and let the heel drop down. And, you know, and that's okay. Uh, that will help. But what you want to do is you want to try to incorporate a little more of the fascia and really pull more at the bottom of the foot as opposed to behind the heel, the Achilles area. We want to get the bottom of the foot more. So in order to do that, we need to incorporate the toes. So we can do this in two ways. One is just sitting. This is an easy way. So if you're stuck at your office and you can slip your shoe off, you can do this in your stocking feet. Basically, you're just using your hands. We're gonna sit in the figure four position here. One hand on the heel, one hand across the top, right where the toes are. And we're just gonna gently, and I, I, I do suggest gently, don't just grab it and yank it. You don't wanna tear anything, so just work it. Remember, this tissue is gonna be stiff and uh, resistant at first. We've got to work it back into good health. So grab one hand behind the heel, one hand over the toes. We're just going to gently, and you're going to sort of pull back broadly on the toes. And you can actually, even with my heel hand, I'm sort of pushing my heel forward a little bit and pulling on the toes. And the idea is to stretch more along the bottom of the heel. Okay, or the bottom of the foot, right? Getting here. Your traditional calf stretch tends to do a better job of it stretching out the Achilles. It will get some of the fascia, but just what I find is it just doesn't get deep enough, especially if you've got chronic issues. So this is a seated stretch. You can do this. And what I like to do is hit it, hold it, give it a good 30 seconds. In fact, I'll set my timer. I'll set your iPhone, set your uh, gym boss, set your sport watch for 30 seconds. Let it go for 30 seconds and then relax it. Ideally, do both sides. I will say, where there's smoke, there's fire. If you've got plantar fasciitis on the right side, it's a good likelihood you could develop it on the other. So you might as well do 
good things for the unaffected foot as well, just to prevent problems. So again, with we'll stretch here. Second way of doing this, I'm gonna sneak over here and grab you guys by the collar. Second way of doing this is to do it up against something, okay? So, okay, so let me show you another way of doing the stretch. This is doing it standing. I like this one a lot. I like to actually do this. I prefer to do it with a with like a light shoe on my 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 uh, workout shoe, which is uh, you know a low profile type shoe, a light shoe, uh, just so that the uh, ball of my foot doesn't slip. You're going to use something: a wall, a uh, door frame, a heavy piece of uh, furniture, like a leg on a couch or something. And what you're going to do, I'm going to I'm going to bring the camera down so you can see my foot. Okay, let's go here. So here we are against the door. You're going to take your foot, push the ball of the foot against the door, let the heel rest on the floor, and then all you're going to do is take your knee and press your knee towards the wall, okay? Again, you're going to push and hold that for about 30 seconds, back off, switch and do the other side. I like to do each side like three times through. Okay, so you're doing three sets of 30 seconds. Again, the heel rests, we push. And how far you push that knee is totally up to you. It's got to do with your flexibility. But when you start to feel that pull on the bottom of the foot or where that plantar fascia pain is, just stop, hold it, give yourself 30 seconds, and then back off. So there you go. Two versions of the stretch right there. Okay, two versions of the stretch. One seated, one against the wall here, okay? One against the wall, right? Working on that. All right, hang in there. We're gonna show you the strength thing. Hold on. All right, bear with me, folks. Uh, I am my own cameraman, so we've gotta do some jostling here. Okay, strengthening. Here's one of the best ones you can do. It's called the towel scrunch. Take a, use like a workout towel, right? Or a dish towel. Don't use a big old bath towel. What we do is we lay it out lengthwise. Grab the toe, we're gonna scrunch it with our toes. Pull, scrunch, pull, scrunch, pull, scrunch, pull, scrunch, pull, scrunch, pull, scrunch, pull. Till we get to the end of the towel, right? So, I don't know, what do I do, five or six reps? Finish that, lay it back out. Do it on the other side. Scrunch, pull, scrunch, pull. So I'm actually sort of scrunching, pulling, resetting, scrunching, pulling. So I'm just kind of dragging that towel in small doses, okay? In small doses, right? I like to do three sets. I'll just do three sets. I'll just go right, left, right, left, right, left. Boom, done. Three sets, done. Um, the next exercise I like to do is just a little uh, toe extension. So what we do is we, we extend the big toe is what I'm after. I try to grip the floor with the lateral four toes and pick up and extend just the big toe. So here we go, ready? Go. It is harder than it looks. Again, we're trying to coordinate. If you look at the top of my foot, you see all the tendons working. We're just working some of the extrinsic muscles of the foot. Um, these are muscles that oftentimes really get weak on people. They don't even realize it. Okay. So we're just trying to pick that toe up. Okay. Again, I do about six reps on one side and then I'll switch and do six on the other. Why six? No particular reason. Just time reasons. I find six takes me a fairly good amount of time just trying to control that big toe. Okay, so six on the right, six on the left, three times through. So that is the strengthening phase. The smashing phase. I know it sounds awful, doesn't it? It's actually not so bad. Um, you can use something very simple. I like a golf ball. Uh, I just like the, I like the firmness of it. I like the size of it. I feel like for a lot of people, uh, it just fits well along the bottom of the foot. You can use other things. I've had people use tennis balls. For me, I find the tennis balls a little too soft. Uh, a lacrosse ball, certainly hard enough. A baseball, they all tend to be a little big. 
So this is why I like this one. So if you've got a golf ball, use a golf ball, but whatever, use what you've got laying around the house. Some people use a dog toy, a nice round dog toy if it's hard enough. You don't want it too squishy because it's got to do the, uh, the, the massage work, okay? And that's basically what we're doing. We say smashing, we're just, we're doing soft tissue work. We're trying to release, break up some adhesions, get things to flow, fascia, tendons, cartilage, ligament, all that kind of tissue, white tissue, doesn't get a good blood supply. So what you're trying to do is do things to, to encourage more circulation. Basically what we're trying to do is get the bad stuff out and bring the good stuff in. So this is part of the process. So what we do is we just put that down. Don't do it standing, do it seated. Everything here should be just seated is the easiest way, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna get the ball under there and you can gauge how much pressure you push down on your fascia. You are in control. So if it's really tender, you just put, basically just pull your foot up a little bit and lighten it up. I like to do multiple patterns. I like to go linear, work it, right? I also like to do little circles, little circles. And the idea is you're taking the ball and you're trying to work all the way around this fascia. So just hunt around. Wherever you tend to get your, your greatest amount of pain, you're gonna to wanna to hunt in that area and see if you can find gritty, tender, nasty, adhesed areas. Do not ignore them, do not avoid them. Just lighten your pressure. So, if your pain is primarily right in the center of your heel, as you get back to that heel, right, I find it, you might have to lighten the pressure a little bit and just work it. Grind it a little bit, a couple little grinds. Work around, hunt around some other areas. Hunt around, because sometimes what you find is as you're hunting around with the ball, there are some other areas that are pretty tender you didn't even realize you had, right? You just hunt around. What I would do is spend a good two minutes working one foot, spend another two minutes working the other foot. And believe me, when you work the other foot, you'll probably be surprised that it's uh it's uh it's also tender in places and you didn't even realize it so work around this is good this is good uh good maintenance for your feet anyway especially if you're an athlete if you like to run jump whatever take care of your feet all right so that is the smash part with the ball okay another little tool you can use you can use and there are a number of different foot rollers out there this is one uh i used called the petty yeti uh, this one actually is unique because uh, you can fill it with water and freeze it in your freezer. So it becomes very hard and it be it's cold. So you get, um, you get the cryotherapy along with it. And uh, what you do is you roll out your foot for two or three minutes using this. Uh, but you're also getting the cold therapy at the same time, which is anti-inflammatory. So it's got two um, ends on it, the ridges and the knobs. The ridges is the lighter, the knobby end is the more aggressive. What I usually recommend is start out on the ridges and you just roll it under your foot and roll it in spots, right? Start with the ridges. If during this two minute session, you feel like that's starting to break up and it's getting a little more comfortable, feel free, go to the knobs. They're much more aggressive. They're gonna be a little rougher. So you might have to just back your pressure off a little bit and hit those areas. Again, you don't wanna bypass them. You wanna hit those tender areas, just work them a little easier. That's all, okay? If you're just getting started with something like this, the first few sessions, you may just wanna stick with just the linear end, okay? Um, so that's a, that's a petty idea, that's a handy little tool. Uh, if you don't have something like this, you can, uh, you, you can see if you get on Amazon and just Google or uh, just search uh, uh, foot massage tools, boom, all kinds of things come up. This one I like because it's frozen, right? Hard frozen and does a nice job of giving you cold therapy as well. Because in any event, when you're done doing all this stuff, right? At the very end, we're gonna take an ice pack. This is not an ice pack, but I'm just gonna fold it up like one. If this was my ice pack, right? We'll take it, plunk it down, and rest the sore spot on the ice pack. Now, you can do it barefoot, 
but it's, it, it's a thin area, so the ice can get pretty uncomfortable if you do it barefoot. You might want to put your sock on, give yourself a little bit of a barrier, and even still on those sensitive areas, I'd like you to ice it for a good 15 minutes, but you might have to ice it for two or three minutes, take a little break, let it warm up just a little bit, and go back. It's not a big, thick, muscular area, so there's there's not a lot of tissue to absorb that cold. So sometimes, sometimes you have to just do it in stages. So in the course of 15 minutes, maybe every three, four, five minutes, you just you, you might have to pull it off and just take a little break. Okay, but this little routine done. Hate to say it, but you probably should do it at least three times a week for you know a good. You know, initially give it a good six to 12 weeks to see if you can get make some progress, okay? So just to review it, we did stretching, we did it seated, we did it standing against the wall. Um, we did strengthening, which is the towel scrunch and uh, the toe, toe extension, right? We did um, um, smashing using the ball or a foot rolling tool like the Petty Yeti. And then we did cold therapy three times a week. I know, sounds tedious, but nice thing is foot rehab, shoot, you can do this while you're watching a movie. That's how I do mine. I'll do it while I'm, you know, watching something on Netflix or watching, uh, you know, the Celtics game or, you know, watching uh, even the evening news for that matter. Okay. So you can do it while you're doing other things. It's, it's pretty easy. You can even do it while you're, you know, checking your Instagram or you know, reading the newspaper. So there you go. Fairly easy. Get to it, work on it, give it three times a week, give it a good six to 12 weeks first initially before you make any decisions about what you need to do next. But try it. Um, I'm Joel, this is Vintage Fitness. We're down here in the cavern just messing around seeing if we can fix your feet. So uh, check back for some other uh, videos on my channel. Uh, you can find me, Joel Palmer, VFSV. Just look for me there on YouTube and look at some of the rehab stuff and check back for other videos later. Take care. Life is heavy. Train for life.